Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons, a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for more than 400 days. I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today I'm going to speak about every single detail which is known about Warped System. Well, it's pretty known that Warped System is one of my favorite features of the whole game and I tried my best to find out all the details which is important to know for uh, beginners for experienced players or the players who just want to find out more about call of dragons in this video we will speak about all the details such as attributes and how attributes affect warpets uh, which warpet is good for which hero pair which is very very interesting and very important also regarding the skills and the stars of the skills how you can actually upgrade the skills of the warpets being like 100 percent free to play player just just like me so let's dive in and let's start from the beginning first of all we need to understand which warped is good for which hero pair and for that we need to go to this section where there is every single warped uh, and we're gonna start from the beginning first of all berserker fade rake i think this uh, warped is especially good for the cavalry and mainly for the uh, foreign deal simply because of the arrogance skill and the cowardice which is uh, arrogance is getting that's like a best synergy for forondil and of course other skills such as first attack is giving you a like additional buffs and additional effects and in general i think a warped of the uh, cavalry hero should be able to do hero skill damage uh, i mean the rage skill and the accumulation of the rage skill which is great with the first first attack the second one is one of my favorite uh, warpets, which is uh, Sapphire Fair Drake. I think Sapphire Fair Drake is the best uh, warpet for the mage players, like especially for, let's say, uh, Lilia and Welin, Walder and Welin, uh, even uh, for like Atheist hero pairs, even Thea hero pairs, simply because Sapphire Fair Drake is a flying warpet, and you can actually attach flying warpet to the flying heroes. Why Sapphire Fair Drake is so good? Simply because of the uh, pain bloom talent uh, pain bloom talent skill it's just strictly a uh, damage skill factor talent skill but whenever you're gonna go to the split pain bloom you are dealing to the extra legion the damage and that's always great thing to have after that we have shadow fed rake one of the newest uh, warpets in the game i think the shadow fed rake is the main warped for the bertrand uh, hero pairs uh, in general whenever a new hero comes out and new warped comes out at the same time that's like exclusive the warped for that particular hero so if you are playing with like for example bertrand and thea bertrand and atheist uh, bertrand and dohar you would like to have a bertrand uh, like shadow fedric for the bertrand uh, hero pair generally like this is great warped simply because of not only just dealing damage like magic damage captive your legion deal more damage to target inflicted with captive that's the synergy with bertrand and dohar the next one is like golden rock again one more cavalry uh warped for the cavalry hero pairs the main idea about golden rock that its exuberance is simply giving you rage accumulation speed and it's pretty known that exuberance and rage accumulation speed is especially good for cavalry hero pairs such as emrys and bakshi such as uh, theodore and emrys and even for some uh, foreign deal uh, hero pairs generally that's the rage accumulation synergy with the cavalry hero pairs so if you are playing as a calves you would like to have golden rock in your uh, warped collection the next one is of course snow peak rock and as a marksman main in general from the day one in call of dragons i know way more about about marksman warpets and any other warpets uh for my in my opinion snow peak rogue is especially good with the nico and kinara hero pair not only because like legion physical attack um, additionally in percentages but what's most important 30 percent chance to deal damage to the target legion when inflicting defense break well it's it's pretty well known that nico and kinara is all about defense break like for example nico's first skill has defense break uh, kinara has synergy with defense break on her 
uh, awakening skill and of course uh, even Nico's awakening skill has synergy with defense break that's why I think uh, snow peak rock is the best warped for Nico and Kinara and generally if there will be like another hero pair which will be stylized with the defense break I think snow peak rock will be absolutely amazing with that uh, next one is yet again one more marksman uh, warped which is night rock night rock came out with syndrome and fragar which it's easy to understand that best hero pair for Nitrog is uh, Syndron and Fragar and the Ravage kill which Nitrog has uh, gives you your Legion um, attack crit rate and normal attack have 30% chance to deal damage additional damage upon landing critical hit. A normal attack and critical hit is the main idea about Syndron and Fragar uh, that's why it's pretty easy to understand that Nitrog is especially good with that hero pair but I think in general Nitrog is so good that you can use um, this warped with any single uh, every single marksman hero pair which is in the game but still i think that nitro is great with syndrome and fragar first bear one of the oldest uh, warpets in the game uh, it's an infantry warped and i think uh, first bear is especially good good with the madeline uh, hero pairs uh, simply because like we can read it like when your legion gains shield your warped gains primitive strike for 40 percent chance to deal damage to target legion upon being hit by normal attack well it means that you have to have shield madeline is giving you shield any infantry hero pair which is gonna give you shield will be great uh, but my opinion is that it's especially good for the madeline uh, Stripe Berm, like another warped for the healing, another warped for the infantry players. Um, my idea is that Stripe Bear is especially good with the Garwood hero pairs like Garwood with Madeline, Garwood with Eliana, and Friendship is the main skill of the Stripe Bear. It simply gives you Rigor. Rigor is like HP bonus for 5 seconds, and also every every 100 healing uh, factor increases Rigor effect by uh, percentages depending on your strengths. Uh, the next one is yet again a one more uh, infantry warped, and I think the best infantry warped, which is Bruin Bear. Uh, Bruin Bear is the exclusive warped Warped for the Goresh and Skolgul hero pair, and it's well known that Goresh and Skolgul have been the best infantry hero pair since the release of these two heroes. Uh, it's amazing warped. If you will have Goresh and Skolgul and you are playing with them, try to apply uh, Bruin Bear on their hero pair, and like generally, each counter attack against an enemy legion inflicts one stack of barbed mark. The so next time the hero casts a rage skill, they deal damage to five surrounding enemies. 5 is important number, the main artifact for Goresh and Skolgul, the Torque is taunting 5 nearby uh, enemy legions, so the synergy is pretty easy to understand. Uh, the Sand Lizard, one of the most unique uh, warpeds in the game, simply because Sand Lizard can be used in almost every single warp, uh, every single hero pair uh, which we have in the game, uh, but we're gonna speak about the most important ones, and I think the newest hero pair, which is uh, Magrot and Zyda, which has a synergy with him healing will be amazing for sand lizard uh, like your legion heals up to four your nearby legions every sec six seconds while in battle it's an amazing warped simply because you can use it for magrot and zaida you can use sand lizard for syndrome and fragar you can use Ma sand lizard with like any infantry hero pair which is main idea is to heal your troops and that's how you are getting stronger in terms of marksman uh, the sand lizard is good because it gonna give you a way of being tanky and stay alive longer so you will be able to deal more damage but in terms of synergy the best and most perfect synergy which sand lizard has is a uh, magro tenzaida and that's the hero pair i'm advising to everybody the sandal lizard and ice lizard i'm gonna speak about them together simply because i think they are the worst warpets which we are having uh, in call of dragons both of them are magic warpets and uh, in terms of synergies uh, like there is not a lot of synergies about their skills and hero pairs simply if you don't have sapphire fair drake if you don't have shadow fair drake you can use sander lizard the sander lizard is actually the worst one and ice lizard can have some more 
synergies with like well Walder and Welling um, and like that's it in my opinion so that's why I'm not going to speak about them much and I will continue with the last warped Venomous Lizard generally Venomous Lizard is again overall warped for the any hero pair which is accessible in the game uh, honestly I'm taking Venomous Lizard with my infantry hero pairs like my infantry is uh, Garud and Eliana you can go for Garud and Madeline uh, simply because more time your hero pair will stay alive you will have more chance to inflict poison and it's pretty well known that poison needs some more time in order to deal damage so there is no the better choice for you to have infantry which is the longest uh, staying alive hero pair in the game and that's when and how venomous lizard will be dealing more and more damage that's it regarding like which warp it uh, is important to know to which uh, hero pair it will be accessible i hope i was understanding and as always if you guys will have any questions uh, feel free to ask now the next topic would be how important the attributes of the warped are uh, and honestly attributes are one of the most important things in the whole in the warped system simply because like let's say every single skill has the main attribute which is uh, determining the uh, the skill strengths and skills useness so like for example for my first bear and for the first armor it's the, like every single stat which you're gonna see on the first armor is determined by strengths which means higher strengths i have uh, better this skill will be and more like in percentages in uh, like damage factor shield factor will be higher uh, percentage will be higher and even some seconds will be higher that's why uh, if you are building your warped at first check uh, which skills are determined by which attributes and then try to get the maximum amount of attributes for every single warped there is like three to maximum four main attributes but here we can see that the attributes amounts are mainly six so it's not the necessity to have every single attribute to the s tier uh, what's important to understand that uh, at first try to understand which warped skills has the which attributes is important like like for example for my snow peak rock uh, the main attributes are strength agility and luck and whenever i'm going to build or i'm building my snow peak rock I will try my best to have strength, agility and luck on an S tier. For example, for Sapphire Fair Drake, intelligence, spirit, and luck is my like main attributes. That's why you should always try to uh, get intelligence, spirit, and luck on the S tier. How you can find out which uh, warped's uh, attributes are main? It's really easy. Simply just click on the main skills like intelligence here, uh, intelligence here, uh, luck on super follow up, and I think follow up synergy is amazing for the mage warped's. And the follow up is huge here again intelligence uh, like uh, uh, spirit is resonance and the third skill for the pain bloom synergy which is split pain bloom is the spirit one so it's really easy to understand intelligence spirit and luck is the main attributes never forget that the attributes are, are not just numbers they actually add add the power and the uh, useness of your uh, warped skills more and more uh, like uh, perfectness i guess because if your attributes are really low your skills will have way less damage and then you won't gonna be happy about your warpits uh, the, that's it I guess about the attributes of the warpits later on the video I will be speaking about the builds of the warpits which is also very, impo very important but until we're gonna move forward about the builds we need to speak about the skills of the warpits um, so, so for every single warpit in the game there is like couple of synergy skills right uh, for example let's speak about snow peak rock again main synergy skills are talent skills and every single talent skill has two additional synergy skills for example concentration is the main skill for the snow peak rock and the concentration has two synergy skills which is uh, forceful concentration and the third one is super concentration let me find the super one so i will be able to show you yeah super concentration whenever you're gonna have every single uh, synergy skill of the main talent it will show up like this let me grab like i have chain strike synergies 
every single skill and whenever i'm gonna scroll down you can see that i have both uh, synergy skills for the chain strike it will be same for main talents uh for example for ravage i only have forceful ravage that's why it shows that forceful ravage is here and i don't have super ravage and i like that's why it's not showing so main idea about skill that every single warped has three main skills one is my main talent and this last one is the uh, buffing skills for the main talent my advice would be to at first focus on main synergies of every single warped because in my opinion if you are not putting the main skills of the warped it's like fighting with a hero with a one star with only one skill which will be really really useless so most important uh, thing about skills at first try to build the main skill synergy and then follow the other thing synergies right also let's say you guys finally understand how the main skill and the main skill synergies work what's the additional skills you can attach for the warp it well the system is pretty similar to other skills like for example chain strike is the another main skill another passive skill which has two synergies and here is like wild chain strike and variable chain strike if you want to have chain strike it is mandatory to have wild and variable chain strike because uh, without that it will be like one alone skill which is gonna do some stuff but it won't, won't be effective so you need to understand every single skill is like one priority main skills and other synergy skills right so again uh, we just spoke about chain strike let's go for example for infantry skills we have counter strike here the one of the main skills and counter strike has two synergy skills which is wild counter strike and tough counter strike whenever you have every single synergy skill on your warped it gives you additional buffs which is uh shown in the green it's here whenever we're gonna click on the uh, skill so i hope you guys understood i'm gonna speak about what kind of skills is important to know to attach to the warpeds on the later with the stages of the video for now it's important for you guys to understand that uh, main skill synergy is the most important and after that second synergy second three skill synergy is mandatory to have but priority is always main talent skill and the talent skill synergies now what's the most uh, fun aspect for me about uh, uh, warpeds is that you can actually add stars for the skills on the uh, warped skills right before it was almost impossible to add the skills manually and as a free to play player i managed to get my first uh, main skill ravage on the two star and i will tell you guys what would be the most perfect ways for a everybody to play the game and manually like organically without spending in the game upgrade upgrade your warpets right uh, the newest update gave us the chance to simply upgrade every single warped skill which we have and like for example uh, if your main skill concentration is a zero star uh, concentration you would want to have four zero star concentrations in order to upgrade the concentration to one star and uh, additionally if you have one star star concentration you would want to have four one star concentrations in order to make it to the two star i hope i'm understandable if you guys will have any questions feel free to ask because i'm always happy to answer that and for example i'm showing it here I have one star concentration uh, on my snow peak rock which is attached also I have two one star concentrations in my backpack and if I will add two more then I will simply click on upgrade and my concentration will become two star so there is also important question how you can get get one star concentration or even zero star concentrations I uh, we will find out right now every single day you have a chance to catch the warpeds right like for example if i had warrants i would be able to catch the snow peak rock and if i got lucky i would have concentration on the like main skill of the warped or like a zero star on one star right my main idea is always like this like for example right i want to get 
arrogance skin from this warped because I want to add this arrogance one star to my another berserker Frederick, which I'm targeting to make the arrogance two star. That's why I'm collecting four one star arrogances, right? Here, uh, whenever like you're gonna catch a warped, it might have like four skills, so like five skills or two skills. Let's say the warped has like three skills here, and let's say this is a, another skill, like let's just add you know, one more or like I'm not gonna spend it like let's say it's we have one more skill here and if you're gonna click on leave the warped uh, there is a big random and I, I have no idea how much the percentages are if you will get the arrogance which is your desired warped so my strategy is like this uh, if I have three star three skills on a like for example berserker Frederick and I want to get arrogance on one star I simply regenerate until I have only two skills on this warped which means I have already like 15% uh, chance to get the desired warped but in some cases uh, like uh, this is like one star angry roar and let's say this would be like zero star arrogance uh, it's like 50% chance if the stars of the both skills are same like if it was like two star angry roar I would have more than 50% chance to get arrogance whenever I'm gonna click on uh, releasing the pet so now you can understand what kind of gameplay you need to play in order to collect the desired uh, warped skills and warped star skills in order to upgrade your main uh, builded warped synergies right it's pretty easy uh, whenever you're gonna catch the warped and you want one skill which you want so much uh, and if the warped has couple of skills regenerate until there is only two skills and uh, the until you're gonna click on uh, like leave the pet or uh, like what what is called uh, let me check yeah if you until you're gonna click on like leaving the warped make the other skill higher star uh, than your desired warped skill and when you're gonna go leave the when you're gonna click on leave the pet there is higher chance for you to get the desired warped skill which you want that's how i managed to build my uh, nitrox two star ravage of course there is still high there's still chance that you won't gonna get the desired ravage and desired warped skill which you want but at least in this kind of uh, gameplay you have a higher chance for you to get uh, the desired warped which warped skill which you want uh, of course it might be complicating for you I tried my best to explain as simply as I can uh, but still if you will have any questions feel free to ask me in the game in the comment section on the YouTube or in the discord because I don't leave any questions without answer because that's a generally what kind of person I am so uh, um, I hope you guys understood how you can make the skills of the warpets um, rise up in terms of star uh, but of course there is some skills which you can uh, upgrade by simply buying the skills right like for example if you want if I want to upgrade counter strike I need to buy uh, from the currencies because counter strike one star is available into the shop of the uh, warped skills so there is like no need of uh, trying hard in terms of other skills whatever i just spoke about the upgrading the stars it's mainly for the main talent skill uh, for the other skills like you're gonna go to the auction house and you're gonna click for example one star and here there is price of every single warped skill which you can get like even you can get a uh, forceful con concentration you if you will buy four forceful concentrations you're gonna make your one star concentration forceful concentration to the two star so until you're gonna try your hard to get some skills uh, check the auction house check the store maybe you will see your desired warped skill on this section and it will be easier for to upgrade the stars of the warpits that's why that's how i actually upgraded some of my uh, warped skills such as uh, wild counter strike even some uh, like even top counter strike actually i bought from the store and for my snoopy croak i even bought like uh, first attacks um, like 
let's say like tokens because whenever you are upgrading your warped skill it's it's kind of token right so until you're gonna plan me what you're gonna do in terms of warped at, at first check the store and then you're gonna find out what kind of uh, skill you need to try hard in terms of catching and leaving them and then you're gonna decide how you're gonna build your warped now what's uh, one of the most important and i i know i said the most important many many times during this video because every single step is important if you want to build your warped right so which kind of skills are important to have on which kind of warpets i'm gonna divide the warpets by the legion types and i think let's start with marksmen and archers i think we have two kinds of archers in the game already three after magrot and zaida um like normal attack archers with crit uh skill damage factor archers um uh, with the nico and kinara and normal attack with the uh norm with the healing right with the margo tenzaida for example if your marksman is skill damage factor i'm sure you guys it will be easy to understand first attack is great whenever you have a skill damage factor abilities simply because uh, like you are dealing more damage whenever your deputy is casting a rage skill and if your marksman is skill damage factor you are using a rage skill as your primary damage source so you want to, you want to buff this kind of effects of your marksman if you are playing with normal attack crit rate uh, you want to have as much normal attacks as possible so chain strike synergy is great thing to have for every normal attack hero pair and chain strike is giving like 15% chance to deal additional damage when dealing physical normal attack damage since and Freygar, Magrot and Zaida is dealing more normal attack damage than Nico and Kinara for example and that's why I think chain strike synergy is great with uh, normal attackers that's like main uh, uh, the synergies for secondary synergy skills like for skill damage factor of the marksman is first attack synergy and for normal attackers is chain strike now let's go to the infantry uh, hero pairs and infantry warpets well like was, as i have mentioned the infantry's main idea is to cast a rage skill as much as possible so i think having first attack synergy on infantry hero pairs it's really mandatory because as i have said before first attack is great whenever your deputy is casting rage skill as much as possible and there is not a better hero pairs than, rather than cavalry hero pairs who are casting uh, rage skills more and more because they have skill uh, have rage accumulation speeds on their play kit so i think first attack is mandatory for cavalry players in terms of infantry players uh, it's easy to understand counter uh, counter strike synergies are great to have uh, when your legion is hit with normal attacks they have 50 percent chance to deal damage to the attacker which is basically counter attack damage and as always like every single main skill has two synergy skills which is wild counter strike and of counter strike of course i'm not speaking about talent skills because i have said it before talent skills are the priority right now i'm speaking about the second priority skill synergies right for the major hero pairs for the major warpets i think it's really mandatory to have follow-up synergy it's just too perfect to not to do it right like let's read it and you guys will understand how follow-up is amazing for every single mage warpet warpet has a 99 percent chance to cast a mage race skill uh, gains two seconds after casting one which means you're gonna cast your rage skill twice 99 percent right damage healing shield effect is 24 percent that's like uh, simply because i have one star follow-up that's why my percentages are higher um, shield effect of the one casting can be triggered once every three seconds so if your warped is dealing damage is your he's healing you or shielding you you have a chance to have to do that again and also you are getting crit rate right what can be better than follow-up synergy i have no idea and another skill which i like a lot in the warped mage warpets is resonance resonance does not have a synergy skill it's a lonely skill which is uh, giving the warped skill magic damage dealt in percentages which is determined by spirit 
Uh, what we have left, like we spoke about the infantry, we spoke about cavalry, we spoke about mages, and we spoke about uh, infantry. I think I covered everything what I actually know uh, in terms of warpets in the game. Uh, if I missed something, please guys remind me because this video has been pretty long and uh, I tried my best to make it as short as possible and what's left is that I'm gonna show up uh, my warped collection uh, which I tried to get as a 100% free to play player. That's my Night Rock which I'm using for Syndron and Freygar. I know like cool attributes um, wishes to, the, to be best and better but I think strength, agility and luck is the primary attributes for Night Rock. Of course I'm still trying to make it even better but I don't want to lose this skill slots because skill slots are also important. I'm gonna replace Blood Roar with the Super Rage in the future and that's I think will be enough for my Night Rock. My Snow Peak Rogue, I have two Snow Peak Rogues, one normal attacker which is which has a chain strike and as I have mentioned chain strike is normal attack uh, buffer and the second one I have uh, the first attack and the casting skill uh, skill damage factor snow peak rock uh, I know like here I have like second star forceful concentration and I'm sure I'm gonna make the uh, forceful concentration two star here too uh, in terms of um, attributes for my two uh, snow peak rocks um, I have amazing attributes but uh, here I'm lacking some more skill slots unfortunately but here it, I think that's the perfect one right in terms of magic uh, one I have sapphire Frederick, which I'm using for Walder and Welin. Uh, of course, I wish I had the uh, S tier on Spirit for my Split Pain Bloom, but for now I don't have Split Pain Bloom, and I'm not gonna change this warpath. Actually, I have the highest amount of uh, skill slots on my Sapphire Frederick. The infantry uh, hero pair warpath, uh, which I'm using, is Venomous Lizard. Um, I have uh, Counter Strike Synergy, of course. Uh, the attributes which is better, but what's important is that I have Endure on S tier um, and of course for the infection uh, the agility should be better but at least I have endurance and strength which is quite important for uh, infantry warpits. Uh, what's left well I don't play as a cavalry that's why I don't take too much attention for golden rock like having one exuberance is already enough for me and of course uh, randomly I got berserker Frederick arrogant skill one star and that's why I'm simply keeping it right of course, I finally got my Zyda and I'm trying to build my Sand Lizard slowly. Uh, I decided to do that because randomly I got 2 star Chain Strike and um, I put Stone Aura 1 star on this Warped because it was without main talent skill. And slowly I will be building this Sand Lizard. Of course, I want more skill slots, I want better attributes, but slowly but shortly I'm gonna do that in the future. The Shadow of Drake, um, whenever I got Bertrand and Ohar from the Wheel of Destiny, I decided to put some of the skills because I had Shadow Frederick uh, one star main skill and as I have mentioned before I put some follow-up skills and maybe in the later stages of the game I will be finishing this warpit. Of course uh, Frostbear has amazing current attributes and uh, main Frost Armor has one star but still I'm not playing with Madeline and that's why I don't take too much attention. Regarding my Stripe Bear, I'm having my Stripe Bear because uh, this warpit looks like my, my cat which name is Pablo and that's my avatar in in the game and in the main YouTube channel so I'm just having it because it actually looks like my pet and um, that's why I changed the name so I hope I gave you the brief idea how warpets work and also I showed you guys that even as a being 100% free to play player you can actually build good warpets you just need to understand how to make them and I hope I covered every single detail which is important to know to start building building the warpits and start being important because warpits is not only an accessory it actually gives you a lot of stats a lot of additional effects and a lot of damage uh, uh, if you like the video as always press like subscribe share it always gives me more and more motivation to make more content for this game i wish everybody amazing morning day or night i'm gonna see each other we're gonna see each other very very soon bye bye and good luck